This is an introduction to functions. What's a function? Function is a pairing between elements of two sets. Say you have a set A, B, C, D, and then uh, 3, 5, uh, 9, 12, 17, or something like this. Then uh, you can think of a pairing, like pair A with 3, B with 9, C again with 9, both going to 9, that's okay, D paired with 17. Um, so what we just did was that A is paired by 3, and we can write this as a function notation saying that f of A is 3. Uh, this A is called the input of a function. So, so we're imagining some machinery that carries one element in here and gives you back another element in, in here. Okay, So you, you have something like a machine, and we're calling that machine as f, so that's the name of the function. Uh, this is what you plug in, so that's the input of a function. And 3 is the output of the function. Now, one important requirement for a function is that a function may not have two out outputs for a given value. So, a uh, function can only have one output for an input. So when you plug in something, it should only give you one output. Uh, that's because uh, you want to work with a reliable machine. You always want to have something that gives you a, a fixed value when you plug in something. You don't want a machine that gives you uh, four today but then next day you get a five you want something that gives you the always the same output for a given input that's what we call a function now a lot of times in our pre-calculus class we will have functions that are given by formulas so uh, another example of a function would be something like f of x is given as x plus one so what kind of function is this if you plug in 1, that means you replace this by 1, so you get 2. So it's a function that takes in the value of 1, and it gives you 2. If you take the value of 2, it gives you 3, and so on and so on. You don't have to name your function as f. Uh, sometimes people use g or h. Uh, in math, we usually um, use a single letter function, except for some special case of functions like you later learn trigonometric functions and those are named like in three letters sin cos and stuff like that okay uh, but you usually if you're making up your own functions uh, you just write single letter and then you say g of x and this time let's try like six divided by x so what's that uh, g of 2 would be 6 divided by 2, that's 3. g of 5 would be 6 divided by 5, so that's a, uh, that's a ration, rational number. That's a fraction, and it's okay. Yeah. Now, when, when you have an equation satisfied by two variables x and y, there's something called you get something called a relation. Okay, so here's an example. If you say x plus y equals to 3, then x and y now has a relation. Uh, say, if x is 1, what happens to y? Well, if x is 1, 1 plus y is 3, and subtract 1 both sides, you get y equals to 2. If x is 2, you get 2 plus y equals to, to 3, and you get 
If you subtract 2, you get 1. If x is 3, doing the same thing, you'll see that y gives you 0. And x is equal to 4, y will be, well, 4 plus what gives you 3? 4 plus negative 1 gives you 3, right? So you're going to get negative 1. Now when you have a relation between x and y, you can, you can draw the graph for the equation which is like you, you make a table of values x and y. So you have a 1 to 2, 2 and you get 1. If 3 is the input, if, if 3 is the value of x, then uh, y should be 0. And when x is 4, you get negative 1. You can plot these points on the number line, uh, on the two-dimensional plane. So here's 1. 2, 3, 4, and then it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say this is negative 1. And then you can plot these points one by one. 1, 2 would be 1 to 2, so that's this point. 2, 1 would be 2, and then 1, so it's this point. 3, 0 would be right here because uh, it's zero height, it's right on the x axis. And 4, negative 1 would be right here. And suppose you did this for many other values. So if you plug in 0, you're going to get 3. And if you plug in, say, 0 0.5, you're going to get 2.5. If you plugged in 1.1, you're going to get something like uh, 1.9. And uh, you can plot more and more points. And at some point, if you plot more and more points, you're going to see that it looks like the straight line. Now, the, the line or a curve that you get by plotting all these points is what you call the graph of a relation. So this is a graph of a relation. All right, so we learned what a relation is and what a graph is. Relations basically gives you a pairing. So I like to call relations sometimes pairing. And uh, here's an important fact about functions and relations. As you have just seen that uh, this x value seems like the input and the y value seems like an output, right? So uh, this, is a, this is an example where you have a relation that gives you a function. So let me write down that statement. A relation or a pairing is a function if for any input which is the x value for any x value uh, it has only one only one meaning unique right there's no other, just one for each input. Only one unique output, which is the y value here. Okay, so for each x, if you get only one unique output y, then you call that a function. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, we see that for each input of x, uh, you get a function. So, so, uh, let me summarize that for this example, y is a function of x. Okay. Now, now that begs the question uh, how you can have a relation that's not a function. So let me give you an example of a relation that's not a function. Here's a another relation x squared plus y squared equals to 25. Now for this one if you set x equal to 0 you get y squared equal to 25. But there are two numbers that square to 25. Namely uh, if you have negative 5 if you square that you get positive 25, right? And you also get 5. 5 squared is also 25. So you actually have two values 
for a single input. So y is not a function. So y is not a function of x. So you can't ha say that x is an input of some function and y is an output because you have two outputs, negative 5 and 5. So, so this this relation is saying that y could be negative 5 and then 5. It can be this one or that one. So you have two outputs for one input. So it's not a, fu a function of x. Now if you're curious to know, uh, let's try to figure out the graph of this. So what's the graph of this function? Some of you may already know what that is. This is like 5 squared. So it's x squared plus y squared equal to 5 squared. Uh, but in case it, if you didn't know, then you can plug in values like uh, uh, 0 and you get plus minus 5 and um, 1 gives you some uh, weird value so let's try 3. 3 gives you if you put 3 there 3 squared plus y squared equal to 25. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus y squared equal to 25. y squared is uh, if you subtract 9 that's 16 so you get y equals to plus or minus 4. And likewise, if you plug in 4, you get 16 squared equal, plus y squared equal to 25, and you end up with y being plus minus 3. And when you get 5, when you plug in 5, 5 squared is 25, so y has to be 0. Now, this is also true for negative values, because uh, if you plug in negative values into to x, then you get like, for example, if you plug in negative 3 squared, it will be positive 9. Because if you square a negative number, it's positive, right? So you end up with the same value of x. And you get the same thing. No, this is 3. And this is 0. Actually, negative 5 will also give you 0. Okay, so once you have this, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So you have, at 0, you have positive 5 and negative 5. At 3, 1, 2, 3, you get positive 4 and negative 4. At 4, you have positive 3, negative 3. At 5, you have 0, and you have the same thing on this left side, like this. Okay, well, my drawing's not perfect, but if you keep doing, then you'll, you'll end up with this, which is a circle. Okay, so, so you end up with a circle of radius 5, and this length is 5, so it's a circle of radius 5. Okay, now there's an important thing that you have to be able to see in this graph. A relation that's not a function uh, gives you more than one value somewhere, right? So, for example, when we had this uh, 0, y became 5 and negative 5, right? Now, that culprit is right here. 0, 5 is here. 0, negative 5 is here. So, you have two values right on top of each other. Uh, when x is 0, you have one here, another one here. Um, and a, a test that made us to see that conveniently is called the vertical line test. And vertical line test does the following. Um, vertical line test. Okay, what is it? Vertical line test says if you draw any vertical line, and if, if it meets the graph more than once, then it, it's a fail. Okay, and it fails to become a function. And since that's important, let me write write it in the next page. So vertical line test. If any vertical line passes the graph twice or more, then the graph is not a graph of a function, it is not a graph 
of a function. So th this is a quite handy way of determining if something's a function. So um, we could have, rather than plugging in values, if you knew that x squared plus y squared equal to a squared is a circle graph with a radius a, then you would see immediately that this will fail the vertical line test because this vertical line meets the graph more than once. If you have any one of these, um, then this this immediately says says that that it's not a it's not a function, not a function. All right, so that's pretty important. Now, many people uh, who have seen the vertical line test probably have seen something called a horizontal line test, and because they are kind of uh, uh, confusing. Uh, although I'm supposed to cover horizontal line tests later, let me just uh, explain it here. So to understand horizontal line test, there's something called a one-to-one -one function. One-to-one -one function. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have A, B, C, and you have uh, three, four, and seven. So if you had A going to 3, B going to 7, and C also going to 7, this function is not 1 to 1. It's still a function. It's still a function. A gives you 3, B gives you 7, C gives you 7. So you, you have one unique output for a given input. However, it's not 1 to 1 because both B and C gave you 7. If that happens, you call that a function, not 1 to 1. A function is 1 to 1 if all the values are different for different inputs. So let's say you have A, B, C, and let's say uh, 9, 12, uh, 13, something like this. And if you had A going to 12, B going to 13, and C going to 9, then this is not this is indeed one to one right one to one okay now what does that mean for the graph uh, so if you had a graph like if y equals to f of x um let me give you a concrete example. If, if your f of x was like x cubed minus x, then if you drew this on a graphing calculator or some online software, you'll see that the graph goes like this. Okay. And this is not a one-to-one -one function because if you plug in f of 1, it gives you 0. And if you plug in f of 0, it gives you 0. See, 1 cubed minus 1 is 0, right? So f of 1 is 0. Uh, f of 0 is 0 because if you plug in 0, 0 cubed minus 0 is, uh, again, 0. f of negative 1, you can also check that it's uh, it's 0 because the negative 1 cubed is negative 1 minus of negative 1 is plus 1. So you, this also becomes 0. So you have three different values giving the same output. In that case, it's not a one-to-one -one function. On the graph, if you plot those points that's responsible, then these are the points. Okay, f of neg negative 1 is 0, f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 0. Now, do you see that these three points lie on the same horizontal line? And that's the idea. The horizontal line test is a test to see if a function is a one-to-one. -one. So let me write down the result. So horizontal line test if any horizontal line passes uh, the graph of a function 
a function twice or more, then then uh, then that function is not one to one. Okay, so. Uh, if you look at a graph and you see a, a horizontal line that will pass through the graph more than once, this time it passes three times, right? Uh, more than once, then you say it failed the horizontal line test, so the, the function is not one-to-one. -one. Now, we will be interested in figuring out whether a function is one-to-one -one later in the class uh, because it's an important property that one needs. Uh, in, in order to define something called an inverse function, but that's way, way later. I just discussed it here so that you don't get confused between a vertical line test and a horizontal line test. So to summarize, you have the vertical line test, which is needed uh, to determine if a graph is a graph of a function, and you have the horizontal line test to see if a graph is a graph a, a graph is a function which is one to one or not